Hey folks, I'm Yolanda Johnson Bryan, and you're watching The Other Side of the Dash. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and stick around for a while, especially if you're on the other side of your dash. So today I have a very special guest. Her name is Myra Evans and Myra wears many hats. I'm going to let her tell you in a minute uh, about those hats, but she is a CEO, a life coach and an entrepreneur. Myra, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So Myra, Tell, before we start the show, you were telling me some of the many things that you do. So first of all, Myra, how old are you? I am 56. You guys, this is what Black and 56 <laughs> looks like, okay? <laughs> you look awesome. Thank you so much. And so you I have- We have good genes in the family. Uh, look, hey, they're very good genes. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so even at 56, for those who are watching, uh, or listening, the other, now, if you're listening, I'm sorry, you can't see how beautiful she is, but if you're watching, you can see. And for those of, our, uh, those of you watching or listening who are discouraged about being on the other side of your desk, Myra is 56 years old and she's doing a lot. So Myra, tell us some of the things that you do. So I, I actually uh, wear many hats and um, I think that I'm just really seasoned in this game. Um, I'm from initially from New York. Okay. Um, I started out um, working three jobs. My family is Jamaican. So, you know, we have the culture of having many, many, many jobs. Right. And so this has been instilled in me, like since I was 13, I had my first job. I lied and said I was 16 because I just really wanted to work. Um, and so I got my first corporate job with Citibank at the age of 18 and really understood the realm of finance. Um, and I was so intrigued by it. I stayed with Citibank on Wall Street for about 10 years. Um, and got all my financial uh, knowledge. And it took me in a lot of great places in my life. Um, I'm very strategic with my money. I've learned a lot about finance. And so that realm moved me into um, studying and working for a commercial uh, investment firm on Wall Street. And um, the partner that I worked for, he says, you know, Myra, you would make an excellent lawyer. I said, you think? And he said, yes, he said, because even though you're in accounting, you're so intrigued by the process and the paperwork that I give you, that I, I really think this is something you should pursue. I'm like, ah, okay. <laughs> so I, I looked into it and he says, you know, why don't you become a paralegal? Yeah, I guarantee you a position starting at $80,000. Wow. $80,000, I'm not even 21. What? So I went to Baruch University, I signed up to be a paralegal and realized that this wasn't, this is, wasn't my passion. Uh, I wanted to go to law school, but I knew that finances would not permit me to. So I moved on from that chapter, but I still have to do my belt. And that has moved me and progressed me into my next field, which I became an accountant. Um, I've been an accountant now for over 30 years. I'm very good at it. Um, this is my season, tax season. Right. Um, but I chose this year to actually not do taxes. Um, I wear so many hats. And I think during the pandemic, it taught me a lesson. Um, I do generally about 23 to 25 returns a year. Wow. And I found that during the pandemic, a lot of tax returns got lost. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a huge tragedy for me because it's my name, it's my brand. And these relationships I've had for over 10 years, I didn't understand that their returns were missing until the um, um, stimulus checks were being given out. 
And they're like, Myra, I didn't get my stimulus check. I'm like, what do you mean you didn't get just you qualify? And so then another person called me, why didn't I get my stimulus check? But previously I saw on the news where a lot of mail was being dumped. Ooh. So that's probably, I swear that my returns was on that truck because I personally take the returns to the post office myself and get a receipt. These returns were missing in limbo for a very long time. So I redid everyone's return at my cost. Um, the cost was on me. And I personally FedExed everyone's return all over again, um, just so they could get their stimulus checks. So that was very stressful on me. And I like I cried many nights because here it is, I'm thinking, you know, oh my gosh, these people need their stimulus checks. You know, not everyone was able to go through the pandemic like I did, just smooth sailing, like nothing's happening. Wow. You know, I still had my many hats. I was still making money. And so it really took a toll on me. And so this year I said, I'm going to take a step back and tell everyone, I'm sorry, I'm not doing any t returns. It's not that I don't think I will ever do them again, but I, my focus is moving in a different direction. So. I do you think I'm, I'm not hanging up tax returns totally, but I will always be accounting until I close my eyes. Right. Everything I eat, breathe, and sleep. Now, were you able to retain those relationships with those people that um absolutely they're back, they're knocking. Can you please do my return? You know, so um, and I'm just like, I'm sorry. And I know that it's difficult to find to start with someone else, another CPA all over again. Um, but it's just to me, it's not worth it. Um, I do it. I charge a, a very minimal fee just because I love what I do. You can go to H&R Block, all these other tax places, and they charge you a mint. I don't do that, especially these are my friends. These are my clients. And so I try to keep costs down. And for me, it was it, this year is just not worth the headache. So I'm like, and, and it gives me an opportunity to reevaluate what I've been charging all along um, because yesterday's price is not today's price. And no oh, one likes yeah. to hear that, you know, because they think you do these tasks like a hobby. No, this is my life. I do this in real life. So um, I, won't, I, I won't say I won't do it again, but it's on pause for now. Um, my next hat that I wear is I am a mentor and life coach. I have uh, talked to Maya today about eight years ago. Um, myself and a, a girlfriend of mine, she's been in HR for, oh gosh, decades. And we developed a relationship over 30 years ago. And with her expertise in HR and my expertise in accounting, we kind of formed together and said, you know what, there's another need out here. And she says, well, what do you think that is? I said, I think that there needs to be more of a happening because I find that our girls, Black girls, are falling astray. And I don't feel that they're getting the guidance. And I don't feel that they have anyone to really go to. They have people to look up to, but they don't have people to go to. And so I sort of talked to Myra today and our first year, I believe I took 13 girls under my wing and I basically helped them choose colleges, um, take them to uh, find restaurants, teach them how to eat, teach them what a true plate setting is, teach them how to dine, teach them how to speak, not only just speak casually, but speak eloquently. And to speak when they speak, to believe in what they're speaking about, knowing who they are. And so I did that uh, eight years ago and my girls grew from 13. I think I have 23 girls now um, in the DFW area. And then I also have girls in Jamaica that are in foster care. Um, I have not seen them in two years, so I don't know what's going on because you have to be there on ground to know what's happening. 
Um, but with the pandemic, it has truly changed and li changed lives, right? It's changed lives here in the U.S. and certainly in the third world country. So I'm heart wrenched about those girls because they really look up to me. Um, but again, I plan to get my feet back down there again and finish what I started. And that is to actually build a school, um, not a, a school where they would go for a regular elementary or junior high school, but a school that they can go to that's a safe place, a safe place where they can go sort of like a school and a camp at the same time. Right where they can go and they can get the skills that they need to become a young lady. So that's my passion, that's my focus, and that's what I've been working on through my mentorship. And then I also mentor women my age and older. <laughs> and I found that women our age um, definitely are going through some things. Yeah. I want to say things. I'll say things. Things, right. <laughs> um, marriage, divorce, uh, depression, midlife crisis. You know, how do we get acclimated to this other side? Um, and that's important to me um, to share my story because sometimes when people look at me, they're like, oh my God, you look so young, girl. You look like you ain't never been through some stuff. Right, I was going to say that. <laughs> oh, so, so this life has been, I've been on many tracks of the road. So so before we get into talking about your trans, trans, uh, transformation, because you have a story, everyone has a story, but you yeah. use your story to inspire others. But I have to ask you, Myra, all because you didn't even name everything that you do um because i believe you're a chef and you do some other things yes. but i want to know where do you get your energy from and can you bottle it up and send me some <laughs> girl let me tell you where i get this energy from i get it from the late great honorable phenomenal black woman who is my mother Oh, my mentor and my hero, Dorothy Billinghurst. Oh. My mother was a go get her. She defines what a Black woman really should be. And I watch her and I, I admire her. And she's instilled so many great things in me. And I just use those tools, those tools that she has given me to excel in my life. Oh, well, awesome. Awesome. Well, let's talk about this transformation. Like I said a minute ago, everyone has a story and yes. uh, some choose to use it, some don't, but you use yours to inspire other people and you're not afraid to talk about it. So let's talk about this transformation and why, where it led you after you came into this transformation process. So back in 1983, remember it like it was yesterday. Um, I was in a horrific car accident. Mm. I was driving up uh, 236th Street in New York in the Bronx and the traffic light turned red on both sides. And um, when the light got ready to turn green, instead of it being opposite, they both turned green at the same time. Oh. The gentleman, I was doing probably about 25 miles an hour. The gentleman that was coming down the opposite direction, he was doing 80 miles an hour. Whoa. In my car, did a 360. By time I was in the car and all I could remember was just spinning and just hearing everyone saying, oh no, oh no, run to the car, run to the car. Is she all right? And it was life-changing for me. I was in my tender years in my early 20s. And after I had that accident, I was put in the hospital for probably about two weeks. Um, everything started after that. Um, so I developed... <laughs> I developed a room, severe rheumatoid arthritis, mm. but coming soon, I've been working on it now for three years, and it's the title is Dealing with Arty. I developed severe arthritis in my entire body, 
Um, they said that I would never be able to really walk again, run again, do anything, dance. I, I love to dance. <laughs> they said I would not be able to do any of these things. But before they diagnosed me with rheumatoid, the doctors didn't know what was going on with me. They just said, you have a debilitating disease from this accident. It is progressing and it's progressing rapidly. They thought I had Lyme disease. Um, so they were treating me for that. And the pain got worse and worse and worse. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. And so one day after crying, um, I said, okay, Myra, you have to get your bootstraps on because I refuse to live the rest of my life. Like I'm, I'm supposed to be like that chick, you know? <laughs> I'm like, okay, what are we going to do? So I started researching. My mom worked at Presbyterian Hospital, uh, Presbyterian Hospital in New York. It was one of the greatest hospitals at that time. And she was around all working with all these doctors. And so she started asking everybody, what's wrong with my daughter? We need to find, we need to fix, we need to do something. So after seeing many, many doctors, um, they finally diagnosed me and said, your daughter has rheumatoid arthritis. Let's get her with a rheumatologist. Got with a rheumatologist and he said, Myra, I'm going to give you about 20 more year, good years in your life. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm like, oh my God, uh, what, what am I supposed to do with that information, right? So I said, okay, all right, let me go with the program. I, at that time, they were doing a lot of studies on arthritis. And so I was in like five different studies, trying different medicines. I, I know every arthritis medicine known to mankind. I'm like, arthritis, this is for old people. This is not for young people like me. Um, so come to find out, um, even babies get arthritis. So I basically started taking the medication. Um, my joints started, um, I started losing all my cartilage and my wrists and my elbows. And I'm like, wow, maybe he is right. Um, maybe I only got 20 more years. So I started researching and researching and being having a West Indian heritage and having a Jamaican background. We don't believe in medicine medicine meaning right. we more uh, we more believe in natural herbs um herbal doctors right. herbal right. medic uh, medication so i went to jamaica and talked to what they call a roots doctor not by any school or anything just they study herbs and they know herbs and he said, basically, come to Jamaica, like the commercial. <laughs> come to Jamaica, let me take care of you. I'll fix you up. <laughs> I said, all right. I said, well, how long do I need? He said, two months. I said, I can't come to Jamaica for two months. Whoa. He said, all right, well, come here for at least two weeks. I said, Ma, you think I could go to Jamaica for two weeks? She said, I'm gonna, we're gonna put the pennies together and we're gonna send you to Jamaica. Went to Jamaica and realized that all the herbs that he was curating and soaking for weeks, like he soaked these herbs for like weeks or months at a time and making juices and pureeing and, and making it in, in like baby food and drinks and come to find out I was allergic. Ooh. So that was not good. Almost died. Um, so mom shipped me back here to Presbyterian Hospital where I had to get admitted and they had to basically cleanse my entire body from all these herbs that he injected in me. Um, so needless to say, the herb thing didn't work. So then I said to myself, okay, it was my Oprah aha moment where I used to take the train into the city and um, I had to walk about five blocks to my office and I had to walk on a cane. And so I 
you know, I'd limp. It took me about maybe 45 minutes to limp from the train station. Normally, if I could walk regular, it takes like 10 minutes. It would take me 45 minutes to limp. And it was five guys behind me and they said, oh, like, can we curse on here? No. <laughs> oh, you got last night that you can't even walk. Whoa. <laughs> And I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried. They seriously cried. said that to you? Are you serious? So I went to work and I said, I will never take the train to work again. I started driving into the city. So driving, so I don't know if you're familiar, but parking in the city as a back then was $60 a day. Mm. So I would drive to work. And then I got tired of doing that. So I said, okay, Myra, you could make this decision to either let this disease ruin your life or you get this disease under control and you control it. And that is my story is that I chose that I'm not going to let this disease get me. And when I tell you, and, and people ask me to this day, today, like, oh my God, how do you do it? Like, you're so positive, you're so energetic. And, you know, I tell people, I don't know what your spiritual um, praise is or who your higher source is, who's your higher being, or even if you praise anybody, but I'm going to testify to the day I close these here. I know <laughs> that's right. That my Lord and Savior got me through. That's right. And so he keeps a smile on my face. He keeps me going. It's not easy. It's very hard. But I have a very strict diet. Um, I don't indulge in, in um, junk food. I might dip and dab every now and then. I might have a desire for a potato chip. I don't eat candy. I don't drink soda. I don't drink coffee. I don't smoke. What? Wait a minute. Don't you don't drink coffee? No, ma'am. I, I will croak if a, I don't have coffee. <laughs> I'm a minty all day, every oh. day. Mm -mm. I love my mint tea. I'm a tea girl. <laughs> now, what about your exercise regimen? Do you work out or exercise? Work out every day. Um, I just purchased my, um, this is my fifth home. And so I refuse, since the pandemic, I'm petrified to go to the gym. So I created my own gym. So I have mm -hmm. a gym in my house. Um, so I incorporate every morning that I wake up, I have a routine. And um, I always give thanks. That is my first and foremost, give thanks for God granting me another gift, another day. And just allowing me to walk in my purpose. And then I go into my gym. I do 30 minutes of bike, 30 minutes of elliptical, shut that down. I walk outside, put my mask on, get my little jogging on, come back, have a cup of tea. And that's how I start my day every day. I believe that when you start your day, you must start it with a purpose. Right. You know, I hear women saying they have their vision board, they have their goal board, they have this, they have that. I always tell people, you must find the foundation of your purpose, because if you don't know the foundation of your purpose, you don't know why you get up every day. Right. Once you know why you get up every day, then you can say, okay, if I didn't get it right yesterday, I'm going to get it right today. And if I didn't get it right today, there's always tomorrow. But I tell women, it's never too late. So it's never too late to get it. So to our 50 plus and fabulous, our over- the, over the other side of the dash, our dashers. So Myra is an example, and it's not necessarily to put Myra on a pedestal, but you know, I was there at one time where I thought, okay, I'm 50, what do I do now? Um, I, I'm a business owner, and then business kind of tanked. It didn't really tank. I started taking care of my granddaughter. I'm raising her, so things just went a totally different direction. I have a multitude of health issues that God is working out for me. So Mm -hmm. There are a lot of women who are thinking, okay, I was telling my, my last guest that I had talked to a woman and she was saying um, she didn't want to retire because once she retired, she thought it would be over uh, for her. And then she had focused so much on her children 
that once the children left and she was thinking about retirement, her and her husband have nothing in common. So there's pro probably going to be a divorce. So I just want to, I, I love talking to you. I love that, that you're talking about, you know, you have all of these different things that you do. And I'm sure the way you're talking and the way I'm understanding is you're not necessarily overexerting yourself because you know how to um, kind of reel it back and take care of yourself. And mm -hmm. with that being said, I want our dashers to know you can find your passion. You don't mm -hmm. have to do everything. You don't have to be everything to everybody, but right. find your passion and make sure that you are giving God the glory. And if you're like Myra and you have a story, share that story share because it. just listening to her, look, I won't be a mint tea person. I'm going to drink coffee until God says don't drink coffee. But, you know, just to get, I have a gym in my house too, but sometimes I'm going to tell you, I don't feel like going up there working out. But just listening to you is inspiring me to, like you said, get up with a purpose. And I like those words, um, if I may use them. So yes. let's let's talk about self-care. Yes. For, for us, people our age, women our age, what is self, what is self-care? Because Ooh. a lot of people tend to get self-care, in my opinion. You know, I'm a Christian woman. I think you are. Yes, and right. So they get things self-care kind of twisted. I don't think self-care is necessarily all about me, me, me. I'm going to do me. I'm going to do me, boo, and all this kind of stuff. But I think it's taking care of your body and your mental health because you can't take let's care of anyone else unless you do it. that. So let's talk about that a little bit. What, when let's you help your, your clients, that. yeah, when you help your clients, what are some of the things that you're finding, especially for those of us over the age of 50? So one, I think that a lot of women, such as myself, um, you know, you have your family, your wife, your mom, you're a lot of things. And what I have found is that I, you have, have to understand the definition of self-care because I think people misconstrued self-care with selfishness. Right, exactly. So we have to understand and take our power back and define self-care. Self-care could be different in, for a lot of different women. For myself, I will tell you what my self-care is. Because I have rheumatoid arthritis, I get massages every week. It is a must. It is not a luxury. It's a must because I have to keep these joints lubricated. I have to keep these joints moving. In addition to that, I think self-care is taking time on and reflecting on yourself and on your goals. I think a lot of times we get caught up being a wife, being a mom, and we, we exert our energy, in, especially in our children, we exert our energy in all these other places and forget ourselves. I think I explained it best to my husband five years ago because we were going through some changes and I said, I'm going to break it down to you because men just don't understand. <laughs> this is how I am. I am a tree bark. I am flourished. I am green. I am watered. And now the leaves are slowly falling, mm. falling, falling falling and falling. And what happens to a tree when all the leaves are gone? It, There's it, only a bark. Right. And if you don't water the bark, what happens to the bark? It will die. Amen. Yes. That is what's happening to me. And if we don't have a turnaround somewhere and you don't start watering this tree, I'm going to die right right out of this marriage. So I think it's important to identify and communicate what you want as a woman. I think when you're seasoned and we're on the other side now, there's no more time for foolishness. Right. There is no more room for trial and Ain't error. nobody got time for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Mm -mm. So you must find, I tell people, whether it be 15 minutes, 
because sometimes when you say, oh, like I take an hour for myself throughout the day. It, it, it's just a minimum, 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 minimum. I take a minimum of an hour, maximum of three hours. I will tell you, I need a nap every day. I call it my old lady nap, okay? Because by two o'clock, this here energy is, whoo, it's up now, <laughs> but by two o'clock, I'm like, oh, I need a nap. Right. But it's not a nap to sleep all afternoon. It's a nap to replenish. We must replenish. We must learn how to do that. If you don't have the luxury and you have to go to an office and you have to sit right now, there's, there's quiet rooms. You can go in the bathroom. Wherever you need to go get it, take 15 minutes out of the day and self-reflect and take a wusa. At night, I take, I have a, a, a little facial brush that I got from Burlington. It's about five bucks. And I go get some exfoliator for about $3. Put that on at night, do my face, pin my hair up, put on my Joe Malone before I go to bed. <laughs> Wear some cute pajamas, girl. I got more PJs than I have clothes mm. because I think even going to bed, you should be cute. You must not let yourself go by the wayside. Right. So you wear cute PJs. You must keep your house in order. I always say it should be fresh and ever so clean, clean. Mm -hmm. Declutter. <laughs> Declutter. And declutter. I'm an interior decorator. And if I could just get a hold of some of these people's homes. Mm. So you brought you brought that up. You brought that up. Let's talk about declutter. So we've got people that that like us that are on the other side of our dads. They look, and I'm guilty of this one thing as far as well, I'm guilty of several things, but the one thing that I am guilty of is I've been raising my granddaughter since she was three. So I have every picture she's drawn every a b paper everything and Can when i come to your house do... and get it together <laughs> just 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 let me go just give me the assignment i see i followed the assignment you have to get all that in order it's nothing wrong with saving all of those drawings but we're going to put it in a nice book we're going to scan them that's what I start doing is scanning. Or if you don't want to get rid of the originals, we're going to put them in a nice binder, put them in plastic, and put it on the coffee table so when people come over, this is something you can share. So what would you suggest to uh, those of us who are, are worse than, than myself, who uh, over the years, not just grandkids, great kids, and just things in life there that... that uh, Paperwork, financial paperwork from 20 years ago. How would you suggest them to go ahead? Because you, it's easy to say, go ahead and just get rid of it. it, it there's an attachment to the, it. So some people don't have the creative juices. I can tell you what to do all day, all day, every day. But the sauce is not going to be the same. So this is why there's expertise like myself who can come in and do what I need to do. I could tell you from one to 10, these are the things you need to do, but you are not going to do it the same way I would do it if I come in. So this, there's a, there's a difference, right? Well, let's talk about the emotional attachment to these things. Okay. So let's talk about emotional attachment. Okay. Cause well, I don't want to mention no names, but I have <laughs> some friends <laughs> that just don't want to let go. So I, my motto is, so I've built five homes and every home that I've moved in, I've started with all new furniture. I believe that you must elevate, elevate in your mind, elevate in your home, just elevate your, your things. And so if you have a plate from 1964, <laughs> it's time to let it go yes it is <laughs> okay but it's, it's gonna time. come it's gonna come back in style in 10 years though. never <laughs> now i believe in rotation you can rotate things but certain things you gotta say to yourself when are you gonna let it go right. because this is how you don't you 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 don't turn it in that declutter mode if you don't declutter just imagine if you never got rid of anything ever in life, 
how like like if you have a room and you have stuff just stuff that's really what it is it's just stuff right so if it's memorable i say if it's memorable and it's really near and dear in your heart go to target and get some tubs and put it in there and go put it in the attic right right you don't need to be looking at things from 1960, 70, 80, and sometimes not even 90, because we are in 2022. Right, right. So we got to change. We got to move. We got to grow with the times. And so if you have files that you've had, which I've conditioned myself that I don't keep anything less than 10 over 10 years mm -hmm. anything over 10 years i take it and I, I i i don't even do nothing i call this company they come and they take it and they go scan everything and they put they give me back the original i keep the originals in the attic and i have everything on a disc if you need right. to get to it have i gone back to those discs absolutely not this has been so, this has been so good so shredding, you got to shred, you got to shred. You don't need a tax return past five years. If you have them from five years ago, shred them. IRS keeps everything for 20 years. So if, if you had to get your hands on it, all you got to do is call them. Right. So decluttering to me is, it, it, it's just so important. It's important for your space. It's important for your mind. And it's also important just for your overall well-being. Right. Because if you don't declutter your surroundings, there's no way you can declutter your mind. Right, right. Because so then that, all that stuff. Chaos. It creates yeah, chaos. Just, yeah, chaos, dysfunction. It just sits. It just sits there. You have to, you got to rid that stuff because it's just like in life. If you want to, um, if you want to just have a fresh start, like being an interior decorator, I change with the seasons, right? I don't, I don't keep the same stuff. And they're like, oh my God, do you just buy stuff? No, I rotate. I might move stuff that I have in the bedroom in the living room. Right, right. Room, in I the agree. Kitchen. And you come to my house, you would never think that I rotated because I strategically move things around. So I say that to say is, you just like you change things in your home, you need to change stuff within yourself. Right. I if agree. you don't change with the seasons, then you can't elevate and you can't escalate in your life. Right. This has been so good. And we we could talk for hours because this yeah. is just I, I'm enjoying it. But we're, we're coming to an end. And before we leave, I just want to bring up one more topic. So for those of us who are over, you know, uh, over the other side of our dash who are looking to looking for our passion Let's say we're 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 entrepreneurs you and i so there's no such thing as retirement um but you know those who us who are looking at retirement who have retired who 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 are looking for that motivation to get that spark to go do something that 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 pleases them what one tidbit would you give them I would say just everybody has something that they're passionate about, everyone, and you just need to find what that passion is, and you need to learn how to capitalize on it. Um, I worked for a very wealthy man about 10 years ago, and I watched him start a business, close the business, start the business, close the business, and I said, wow you invested all this money, millions. And I did all his book, 3 million, 4 million, 5 million. And you just going to shut it down and start. He said, my, his Persian, Mayra, if it don't make you money, it don't make don't sense. Make sense. <laughs> I said, oh, so I took what he taught me and I make it applicable in my life. If I do something <clears throat> and it doesn't bring me joy, then you move on to the next thing. Right. So you must find what it is that you're passionate about. You have to be passionate about something. If you're passionate about baking, then start baking some cupcakes. 
start baking cakes and start selling them to your friends. Let your friends give them to their other friends. You got to network. In this business of, of entrepreneurship, you must network. You must get out here, and especially women our age, you must get out here, learn, network, get some ideas, get some, some oomph, oomph back in your life, because know that we're not done yet. Right, exactly. We are, we are like fine wine, honey. We are just maturing and waiting to just explode so everyone has a passion find what that passion is make money on it don't do something just to be doing it I say you got to do something to be bringing in some coins right find what your passion is and then learn how to capitalize on it well Myra I thank you for being on the show today I just love your passion and I'm gonna have you back so I hope that you ask the call to come back because thank you for having me we have so much more to talk about it's it's crazy but um before we go can you tell them how they can reach you yes I am on social media platforms so for talk to Myra today is uh talk to Myra today on uh Instagram Facebook uh, my website is talktomorrowtoday.com. My um, eyewear is uh, Fash on a Budge. It's me, my eyewear.com. Um, and you can find me on Instagram on Shop on a Budge for all your interior and inspiring designs. Awesome. And are you taking new coaching clients? Uh, till 22, not until the summer. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. Well, Mara, thank you so much. And I look Thank forward you. to talking to you. And hopefully we can meet up for, for you. Look, you can have some tea. I'm having some coffee. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Thank you so much and have an awesome day. Mwah. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, folks, another episode of Other Side of the Dash in the record books. Again, take a moment to subscribe, share, and comment in the show notes or in the description below. And I'm Yolanda Johnson Bryant. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.